All right, today I'm gonna to be making a video showing you the difference between the two most popular lasso styles in the world that I personally know about. Um, so you have the Western style um, lasso, often called a lariat, and the Fennoscandian style Sami lasso. Um, so both of these are still used to this day for modern day ranching applica applications. Um, though the quarry that you're catching is generally much different. The western style lasso is generally used primarily for cattle and horses, while the Fennoscandian style lasso is generally used for reindeer. Um, which might not sound like you need a different lasso, but when you're catching reindeer, you generally catch them by the antlers. Uh, when you're using these, you can catch them by the horns, but you're also catching them around the neck. Um, and they're a much bigger animal, so the, uh, the requirements are different. So the first major thing you might notice about, say, these Sami-style ones versus the Western style is, what are these dudes? These little uh, pieces connected to them, or in this case, uh, this one. What are these? This one doesn't have it. Why do you need it? Well, these are the Fennoscandian answer to the Honda knot. You can see they're actually very similar. Um, the bottom rope is kept here. Well, this one is just part of the rope and the loop that the uh, rope goes through is just a Honda knot. Um, they serve the same purpose. They allow the rope to slide in between, which causes that capture knot. Or as you can see here, uh, the same thing, the capture loop or whatever. Um, and they serve the same purpose as this rawhide burner here. Um, this keeps you from wearing the rope down too much and you can replace it if it ever starts to wear down too much because there's a lot of friction between these two as they slide. Um, and that's the same function here. Um, if you ever have to, you can replace the uh, often called the cast ugla or um, kayla. And um, you don't need to get rid of the rope because these ropes take a long time to make. Um, once you traditionally twist them up, you have to go and leave them hanging up like this with the, um, in this case, I just used pine tar, uh, which is a liquid for a very long time. And you just leave it hang up to dry for about a year or two, sometimes over five years, um, depending on your mixture. So you don't want to, you don't want them to go bad. These days though, um, they just use plastic generally, like this guy right here. Um, most modern um, Western style ropes are made with nylon but they used to be made with rawhide and uh, cotton and um, some Mexican grasses are often used. Uh, so while we're on that, you can see that they made these with a twisted, um, with a twisted waxed rope that is very stiff. You can see that's hanging out like that, no problem. Um, while these guys are not anywhere near as stiff. Uh, let's see if I can find the end here. They're actually pretty droopy, um, but they're kind of springy, which is what you need, so it opens up. And they're thrown in very different ways. Um, so I'll try and show you that right now. These are thrown in a, uh, what we call a kinetic way where you're spinning it around your head, which is very optimal when you're on a horse. It keeps it above you. Um, and out of your way and it doesn't really matter if the animal notices and runs because you're on a horse you can catch up these guys are thrown in a static fashion um, which is useful because you basically always throw it from the ground uh, excuse the plane um, so the animal shouldn't have to notice you as much or be as fearful because you're just holding it and then you give it a toss in my experience they also throw bigger loops uh, I'll see if I can demonstrate it for you right now. Hopefully I won't need to video like I did last time because the thing that held up my phone um, hit the off button. So the Western style lasso, you're probably very familiar with. Uh, you generally get out a sizable loop. Um, depending on how big you want, you can make it as big or small as you want. And then you hold like so. And then from there, you give a big loop around your head, or in other cases, you can give it a backwards loop around your head, um, 
whichever one you prefer. Some people prefer other ones, and some people prefer, uh, some people prefer one or the other, and uh, it's also situational. Um, the rest of the loop you can coil up in your hand like this, and uh, when you need to throw, you just release all the loops with the back one, like this, and then you cast out over what you want, you tie it up tight, and there you go. Um, let me just knock that off. Um, so that's a general overview of the rough use of these. I'm not the best glass owner in the world, but you will get the idea. So I'll show you a general sort of loop size that you can expect out of a, uh, a Western lasso. You can make them bigger if you want, but when you swing it around, you toss. Yeah, you can, you can expect a loop. Yeah, I'll just show you. It'd be easier. You can a loop of. Yeah, about this big. You can make them bigger, you can make them smaller, uh, depending on how you do, but you can see uh, that's easily enough to capture, well, almost anything you want. Um, but of course, if you need a big, make a bigger loop. Uh, the Sami style, in my opinion, usually lends itself to giving you bigger loops. Um, because you're not just holding a portion of the rope. Um, you're actually holding, or you're not holding a portion of the loop. Let me rephrase. It's not only a portion of the rope that's making the loop, like in the Western style. Um, the rest of it is being a, I guess, to connect to you. With the Sami style, you're actually more or less converting the entire rope into one big loop that I'll try and demonstrate here. Let me just get some of these twists out. Um, twisting is always an issue with all lassos. You gotta be mindful of it. Uh, so yeah, you're converting the entire uh, length of rope, I guess, into Whoa. one big loop. As you can see here, uh, let me just get this out. But I'll, usually after a couple throws, um, all the twists are out and it throws well, but I just took these out in the rain to uh, make this video. You can see the entire rope is kept here and it's tossed in a sideways fashion, or you can throw it overhand um, depending on how good you are. In this case, I'm going to throw it like this. So you can see I can wait. I don't need to keep it actively spinning over my head or anything. Um, it's actually pretty annoying to do that. But I can sit and wait and when the animal comes by, and cast it out, capture what I need, and then pull it back in, and I'm caught. Um, in this case, I'm just caught to a pole over there. Uh, let me go get it undone. So they each have their benefits and their downsides. Uh, I would think for a survival situation, these are better because you can sit and wait with it. There's no active spinning overhead or charge up or anything. Um, but one big difference I've always noticed is that these tend to be longer. Um, the Sami style lasso is generally no shorter than 50 feet, but I've seen them up to 110 feet in length of rope. Uh, meanwhile, most Western style lassos that I've seen are uh, what, in the 30 foot range, 30, 40, 50 foot range. Let's try and get a toss out here. That wasn't my best toss, but I'll still try and show you. Um, you can see the loop is much bigger. Um, it wasn't my best toss because I couldn't throw it quite as far. But if you, uh, it's not uncommon for me to get throws that have loops exceeding this big um, with the right amount of space. Uh, and this one I didn't try and catch the stick I just threw, but you can see the, the loops you get out of these are very big. Um, so the natural question might be, can you use one as the other? 
Uh, I would say yes and no, actually. What we can do is, this is one of the reasons I like Sami lassos more as well. You can use a Sami style lasso like a Western style lasso. There's nothing that's stopping you from it. All you do is you bring out your thing just the same. You hold it like this and you loop it over your head like so. And you can use it like a Western style lasso just fine. Um, can you use a Western style lasso like a Sami lasso? I don't think so. Um, I can try, but I don't, I fear for how well it'll work. It might work. It's a bit difficult and big and stiff, but I mean, let's experiment, find out together. Let me just uh, give a toss out here. Oh, I guess you can. I guess you can. So actually, yes, the result is you can use both styles. Um, you can see that's why I generally don't try and catch this with the, uh, these guys. But yeah, you can use both styles uh, just the same, and it's not that big of a difference. Um, but you can definitely tell that uh, these, the Sami style are made for it. Um, so hopefully that's not too bad. Hopefully I didn't repeat myself. I tried to make this video like four times, but my camera kept turning off. Um, so yeah, that's the general differences between a Western style and a Sami style lasso. If you do want a Sami style lasso, because they're not, you can't just find them on Amazon. They're not very common. Um, I'll post a link to Slaguglan. Um, I don't know if they ship to America, uh, but I got mine from an awesome Swedish friend that was willing to send it from here to me, or from Sweden to me. Or if you have a 3D printer, uh, I'll post a link to where you can um, find this Fusion 360 file that I designed. Uh, print it 100% infill, uh, infill on its side and it'll be plenty strong. And then the rope uh, I made with a 3D printed machine without a, with paracord and it works just fine. Um, Western style lassos you can find anywhere on basically Amazon or whatever you want. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully this video wasn't too boring. Yeah, thanks. See you all later.